Good morning. I am not Adessa. Adessa can't be with us this morning. And so my name is Dart Rhodes. My pronouns are she, her. And I'm going to step in and be your literist, uh, liturgist to the best of my ability. So welcome to Vancouver Heights United Methodist Church. We are so happy you're here to worship with us on this special Youth and Children's Sunday. You may notice that some familiar faces are not in their usual places today. Pastor Byron, Tony, the choir, the acolytes, the ushers, the greeters, they're all watch watching from a new perspective today. And the Department of Education will be taking over uh, the service and leading you in worship. We thank you for your grace as we take on something new in the name of God. Most of us come to church to be spiritually fed. Sometimes we are also physically fed, and today is one of those days. After service, please join us in the Friendship Hall for lunch, which is provided by the men's group and the worship committee. All are welcome, and of course there is no charge. And after lunch, the Social Justice Committee will be hosting our monthly food fellowship and fun session, and it really is fun. There will be games and crafts and other activities. Please participate as you are able. Next week, we are also going to be physically fed. Um, the coffee hour will be extended to be a full lunch, and everyone is invited. It will also be followed by the all-church meeting in the Friendship Hall. Please plan to stay for that. Please refer to your bulletin for information about other upcoming events and updates. Thank you. We need Aiden. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. I'm a beloved child of God and a beauty to behold. Yes, you are. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. My name is Jax. My pronouns are they, he. And welcome to Vancouver Heights. I would like to start by sharing a personal story. When I was 11, I made the courageous decision to come out to my friends and family. At the time, I didn't know nearly as much about the LGBTQIA plus community as I do now. At the time I, or when I, at the time I initially came out, I thought I was gay. It took me a long time, many failed relationships, and lots of reassurance from my family to realize I'm not. I went through multiple phases of being gay, bi, pan, and questioning. I've spent the last three and a half years struggling to find out who I am and who I am meant to be. It didn't help that I had people left and right trying to tell me who I am. There was a point where I had to completely shut out my friends in order to continue down my path of self-discovery. I was lucky enough to have had the chance to come out when I did and to have had a supportive family who accepted me for who I am and continued to love me no matter what, because not everyone gets the same chance. Some people don't come out until they're an adult, and some never do at all. There are children all around the world who fear coming out, who fear being different. Some children who do come out are kicked to the curb, left on the streets to fend for themselves. Some are forced to confess their sins to priests in order to gain forgiveness and some are forced to hide who they are inside to maintain the family image. These children struggle day by day to be who they are and suffer in silence just to be heard. This song is for anyone who ever felt like they had to silence their voice in order to be heard. Feel free to sing along if, if you wish. I walk alone. 
It's come that time in our program where we acknowledge our LGBTQIA Heritage Month honoree. Today, we'll be honoring Osei Onigan. Osei Onigan is an inspiring LGBTQ plus activist who has made significant contributions to youth advocacy and social justice. They identify as non-binary and use they, them pronouns. Let me share the remarkable aspects of their journey. In the eighth grade, Osei 
realized that change often requires personal action. They fought for LGBTQ plus rights and worked to create a safer environment for students and diverse identities, with diverse identities. Microaggressions and discrimination fueled their determination to make a difference. Okay, so let's start with Jesus loves me. One, two, three. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. this time we'll be recognizing our graduates for the 2024 school year.
And I say to not only our graduates, but all of those that are in school, keep practicing excellence. Keep going. And now it's come that time for prayer. I just ask that you take a deep breath and try to center yourself and think about he's got the whole world in his hands. Gracious and loving God, we come to you on this day, this beautiful day that you have made. Let us not only be glad and rejoice in it, but let us celebrate our young people. Let us continue to guide them and lead them in the way that they should go. Let us keep them a forefront and let nobody else tell their story for them. Father, we're just thankful for the portion of health and strength that you have given us for this day. We thank you for all of those that have supported our youth Sunday this, this Sunday, all of those that have put their two cents in just to turn it to five cents and to 10 cents and to 20 cents, everything that we needed to bring this all together and to show our youth how much we love and care about them and how much that we keep fighting for them each and every day. So we thank you for that, not just the children in this room, but all over the world. Father, we ask that every belly be fed, every child be shown love, and everyone get to tell their own story. And I ask that in Jesus' name I pray, amen. It's come time to take our offering and as our youth are getting in position. I'm not gonna say a whole lot of drastic things and I'm, I'm not as good as pastor about that, but you can't be God given no matter how hard you try, but the more you give, the more he gives to you. And I want you to think about that as you reach down deep in support of the building the kingdom that we are establishing here at Vancouver Heights United Methodist Church. It's well worth it to come here and to have a place, a safe place, to worship God in spirit and in truth. So at this time, by all the different means available, they're on your screen if you're online, but those are here, um, we have our young ushers, our young, uh, that will come by and pass the plate. And just, just look, at, look at our youth and the things that they're doing in this church and pat them on the back sometime today. It's offering time.
Thank you. You may be seated. step because I'm a little taller than most of our youth. <clears throat> Thank you. Can we just take a moment to acknowledge all of our awesome children and youth today? <clears throat> Jax, Ryder, Aiden, Henry, Wyatt, all of our ushers, our greeters and singers, if any of them were out of their comfort zone, they rose to the occasion today. I told them ahead of time, we would never find a more appreciative, loving, supportive, non-judgmental audience than we have right here at Vancouver Heights United Methodist Church. It is true, and I thank you for that. And it's fortunate that it's Pride Month because I'm so very, very proud of all of our youth. Now please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. Our reading today is from Mark chapter 5, verses 21 through 24, and verses 35 through 43. <clears throat> when Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him, My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus agreed to go with him. 
While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the synagogue leader's house to say, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the synagogue ruler, do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. They laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went into where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. May God add his blessing to these words. Please be seated. Seeing is believing. So here's the thing. I am not a preacher. Still, I find myself standing here in this exact time and place having never taken one single course in sermon development or delivery. I did graduate from Westmont College in Santa Barbara, California, academically excellent and enthusiastically Christian, where as an English major, religious studies minor, I took Old Testament, New Testament, theology and doctrine courses, but not even a single class that taught me sermon preparation. I am not a preacher, yet here I am. Two advantages I have are that God is with me and that my parents were ordained ministers. Yes, I was princess of the parsonage. My parents were ordained in the Salvation Army, which is a legitimate Christian church, not just a chain of thrift stores. My mom was a prayer warrior. She had the heart of a minister. She connected with people and met their needs exactly where they were. My dad was a preacher. He was never more alive or on purpose than when he stood in the pulpit. They made an amazing team. I learned a lot from my folks. So today I am calling on my God and my dad to get me through this. If my dad were here, he would have opened his sermon with a statement relating to the scripture, reading of the day. He would follow that with a little story, something personal, usually embarrassing one of his four children. He would have three bullet points to support his message. He would have a well-crafted conclusion, a circular ending, and his final words to the congregation would always be, to God be the glory, amen. So, clearly copying my dad's format for a Sunday sermon, I say to you that seeing is believing. As human beings, when we hear something that's hard to believe, we require proof, solid, undeniable proof, don't we? These days, with photo pro Photoshop and artificial intelligence, we can't even trust photographic evidence. Nothing short of seeing it with our own eyes is acceptable proof. Seeing is believing. Well, my middle child is a huge Taylor Swift fan. Amberlynn loves Taylor Swift. She knows all of the lyrics to all of her songs. She goes to her concerts. So I asked her one day, if Taylor came to your house for a surprise visit, how would you convince your friends and family that she had been there? She said, I don't know, selfies? Nope, I don't think that would do it. As we read from the book of Mark, Jesus was preaching to a large crowd when Jairus, the synagogue leader of Capernaum, came to Jesus saying his daughter is sick. 
begging Jesus to heal her. When the temple leader's friends came along and said, never mind, it's too late, your daughter has died. Don't bother the teacher anymore. They knew that the young girl was gone and nothing they could do would bring her back. Yet Jairus, whose name means he whom God enlightens, believed that the Lord could save his little girl. Jesus, with his great compassion, saw both the dad's pain and his faith, and he said, okay, take me to her. When Jesus got to the rabbi's house, the villagers were weeping and wailing. They loved the rabbi's daughter. She was their own princess of the parsonage. They were grieving because she had died. They had seen her lifeless body. They knew she was dead and it was too late. Nothing could be done for her. Then Jesus said, what are you carrying on for? Calm down, she's just sleeping. And they laughed at Jesus. They laughed at him. So what did he do? He told them all to get out. And he said to the child's parents, take me to her. Then Jesus went to where the child's body lay, and with two words and the touch of his hand, the Bible tells us he raised the little girl from the dead. And apparently being resurrected makes you hungry because Jesus knew exactly what she needed, and he told her parents to give her something to eat. So we know the girl was alive because the dead don't need to eat. But Jesus said, do not tell anyone what you have seen here today. Really? Why is that? Wouldn't you think that Jesus would want everyone to know what he, that he had performed another miracle? Nothing needs to be told. The villagers would not believe it if they heard it. They didn't believe it when Jesus said she wasn't dead, just sleeping. They would have to see for themselves when the girl moved among them alive and well. After all, seeing is believing. Honestly, we don't know what happened next. I don't know if anyone talked, and maybe it's irrelevant. What we do know is that Jesus worked through what everyone in the village believed was hopeless. Jesus isn't just the God that calms storms. He isn't just the God that searches out the disowned people on the fringe of society. He isn't just the God that goes in search of one lost lamb. He is the God that steps through the very fabric of eternity to save us. Bullet point number one. It's never too late for God to step in. It can look like it's too late for everyone else, but God is always right on time. Number two. God has complete power over life and death. After the last breath has been exhaled, God can restore what has been lost, what has been broken, what has died within us. Number three, God cares for each of us deeply. God knows our pain and our needs. God is never too busy to care about us, and God meets each of us right where we are. Would I believe that a famous superstar would stop at my daughter's house for a visit? Probably not without seeing for myself. Though I do believe that there would be changes. She would walk a bit taller and show a bit more self-confidence, having spent quality time with Miss Taylor Swift, her idol. And would I have believed that Jesus worked a miracle and brought a dead girl back to life? If I heard the story, considering human nature, I really doubt it. I would need proof. What I do know for sure is that my God is never late. Nothing is hopeless or too difficult for our God. God knows each of us, knows our needs, and with great compassion acts on our behalf. 
Well, I told you 15 minutes ago that I am not a preacher. I admit I've never taken a class in sermonology. Still, I learned from one of the best, and I'm still learning from one of the best. But I am not a preacher. Or am I? Seeing is believing. And in the words of my dad, the late Kenneth Eugene Rhodes, to God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Hi, I'm Penny Wharton, and my pronouns are she and her. And if you feel like it, or you're in the spirit, or if you're able, would you please stand for the hymn? They'll know we are Christians by our love. We'll do verses one and two. Oh. We... That one looks right. Oh, okay. She got it. Okay. Sorry, I'm having a moment. That's all right. You know what? We all have those, <laughs> myself included. And I'd like to hear some good sound in here. I'm a music teacher. special treat we're going to have a guest pastor come up and speak with us just for a moment <laughs> a man who needs no introduction I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house and let us exalt the Lord's name together I don't know about you all but my heart is overjoyed by this worship experience today I was hoping to be able to introduce Kiani to you all. Many of you all may not know that we have a teenager that serves on our church council and she represents all of these young people that are here and she does a fantastic job doing it. So I'll have to introduce her to you at a later time. But on this day moment of gratitude or this time of gratitude, I definitely want to thank our graduates, their families for being here. We are so excited and delighted. <clears throat> For Zella and for David, what their futures hold, as bright as they are, I can also assure you that as a pastor, the one true way that you know your church will survive is if there are young people. It's the one population that must be present in the church for the church to exist well after I am gone. 
And so even on yesterday, as we celebrated the life of one of our very own uh, Crystal Elmore, it did my heart very well and very glad to be able to see all these young people lead us in worship today. Now, they did not do it on their own. So I want to thank all of the parents, the caregivers, the moms, the dads who drove out, stayed extra, helped out, showed up. We're grateful. And then also our leadership here at the church. I would love to say that just because I'm just such a great and wonderful pastor, everything just happens. But that's not how it works in the United Methodist Church. And so I want to also take opportunity to thank Dart, Dev Avery, Gail Antajunti, Lynn Geiger, Penny, and Abby, and the Christian Education Ministry for all of the work that they did to make today possible. You can clap for that. Yay! And then in our celebration this afternoon in coffee hour, what we're going to actually do is we're going to have cake to celebrate our graduates. We're going to have dinner to celebrate what we've experienced. And we'll also have activities all going on at the same time. So I know it sounds like a lot, but I promise you it will be fun. So we encourage you to stay back after church and come over to the fellowship hall. Congratulate our graduates and our young people. This preacher that we had today. Because seeing is believing. I believe we saw a preacher this morning. Amen. And so we're going to have our acolytes to come up uh, to receive the light. We're going to begin to form our circle. We're going to sing our hymn. And then we will have our benediction by our, I think it's for our, our preacher today. Yeah, I'm following the directions. Amen. Let, let, us, let us gather and form our circle. and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Thank you. 